Hello everyone. Recently, I've started working quite often with SMD components and even got myself a preheater for boards, which makes it very convenient to solder SMDs using solder paste. You just need to place the components and set the right table temperature. It would seem that everything is fine, but placing components with a regular tweezer is not always convenient because they are small, often fly off, and your hand gets tired if you're working with a large number of components. There are so-called vacuum tweezers, mechanical ones. They are inexpensive, but still, this tool is not universal, at least not as universal as the electric vacuum tweezer, which we will talk about today. It all started when a dentist friend of mine, rummaging through his storage, found old and unnecessary devices, which he later gave to me. Among them is this thing, it's a lamp for polymerizing filling materials. Lude jokes about this thing, the dentist's office, and the human mouth are not welcomed by the author. And yes, there are no bacteria and viruses here anymore, and if there were, after my treatment with medical alcohol, there are clearly fewer of them. The device has an excellent plastic casing, a solid iron transformer of about 50 to 70 watts, and a control board. On the front panel, there is a dial, a hole for the power switch, and a small connector. A long time ago, I bought this kind of vacuum pump from the Chinese, or compressor, call it what you want, for building a homemade vacuum sealer, also known as a vacuum backer. In the end, the sealer was bought ready-made, and the pump has been lying around since then. So I decided to put it to use. It's a pretty decent thing. It features a 550 brushed motor at 12 volts and two holes for air intake and exhaust. It fits perfectly into this casing even considering the presence of the iron transformer. But I have plans to assemble a small heat gun, specifically for SMD in this same casing, using the same pump, which will then function as a compressor. Therefore, I will probably replace the iron transformer with something smaller. Moreover, it's quite excessive, because the maximum the motor consumes when powered at 12 volts is about 0 0.6, 0 0.8 amperes. Let's start with the casing. The condition is deplorable. I was too lazy to clean it, so I'll just paint everything black. And after that, it doesn't look much better. So, I'll just cover the traces of my playful hands with stickers. As if that's how it's supposed to be. Next, regarding the power source. We remove the iron transformer, and in its place comes a very decent 15-volt switching power supply, packed with protections and filters. I buy these on AliExpress, and I'm very satisfied. They are from some decommissioned brand of adapters, meaning they sell used ones. It reliably delivers two amps over a long period, as output voltage stabilization, and as I mentioned, is packed with protections and also has a network filter. As a motor speed controller, there will be a homemade PWM controller. The circuit is simple. I've shown it multiple times. The controller is built on the basis of a triple five timer, which controls a fairly powerful MOSFET, IRFC44, but you can use another one. In my case, there's an equivalent. Without any strain, this circuit can work with currents of 10 amps or more, meaning it has a significant margin. This resistor sets the limit, and it needs to be adjusted. The timer itself is powered by a 12-volt regulator, while the power supply goes directly through the MOSFET, bypassing the regulator. The output of the controller is equipped with a protective diode, which will suppress back EMF spikes from the motor, you know, to prevent the circuit from burning out. The regulator will not heat up at all. Well, the heating of the power switch depends on the load current. For currents from a few hundred milliamps to several amps, you don't need to attach it to a heat sink. The circuit will work immediately if everything is assembled correctly. The board is homemade, single-sided, and can easily be made at home. You can download it along with the complete archive via the link in the description. I decided to make the handle of the tweezers from a regular pen and use a tube from an four drip. Convenient, cheap, and effective. The tip will look like this. It's a regular needle for inflating balls. You can buy it at any hardware store or some auto parts stores. The needle is metal, and if desired, you can attach various suction cups for different SMD components. The vacuum is created only when we press the button on the handle. Release the button, the component falls. This design might not be completely airtight, so I didn't make a special effort to achieve full airtightness. The four tube enters through the top part of the handle. This rubber piece is quite handy. It prevents the tube from tearing at the bend and ensures a tight connection with the handled body. 
Additionally, I coated everything with B7000 glue, although a sealant could also be used. Ideally, the main tube should be protected with an additional one that goes over it. But I didn't have anything suitable on hand, so temporarily, which means permanently, I'll leave it as is. The 4 tube is very cheap, so I'll replace it if needed. I experimented with installing the needle for a long time. First, I removed the thread where the front part of the pen was screwed in, then I widened the hole both at slow drill speeds to prevent the plastic from melting, and by drilling with water to completely avoid melting. The first pen fell in the field of battle, and I had to start all over again. In the end, I drilled out this hole as best as I could. Then, I heated this part in, inserted the needle. It sounds bad, but that's exactly how it was. The plastic cooled down, and then I carefully applied sealant to the threaded part of the needle and put it in place. It didn't turn out very pretty, but at least we didn't have to use additional transitions. Everything is as budget-friendly and simple as possible. The needle can be bent at any desired angle. Just be careful so that the plastic doesn't break. The walls at this point are already very thin. I installed a piece of sponge in the handle itself. It will catch pieces of solder, dust, and other debris that might go further down the hose and cause trouble. Since the handle's construction is non-attachable to replace the sponge, you'll have to pull out the hose with this rubber piece. But after servicing, you can put everything back as it was, without any cost. Apply some glue, insert it back, and that's it. The pump was fixed at the bottom of the casing through rubber gaskets for vibration and noise reduction. The other end of the hose goes to a fitting that I secured on the front panel. On the other side, this fitting goes to the pump through flexible rubber. All these components were also taken from the standard drip set. The button on the handle simply supplies power from the source to the PWM controller. That is, if it is released, the PWM controller and the motor are completely de-energized. The wire itself needs to be flexible and elastic. MGTF is perfect for such purposes, but I ran out of it, so I used what I had. I put heat shrink on the handle for aesthetics. The same heat shrink is used to secure the wire. The power source is secured inside the case with zip ties. An insulator is placed underneath it to prevent short circuits. The PWM controller is attached to the chassis using metal brackets. Drawbacks After a few days of fairly active use, I noticed only one drawback. For such a pump, the hose from the standard drip system is too thin, so in some places the walls get compressed. It's worth using thicker hoses, preferably made of soft rubber, or similar ones that are slightly thicker, but with a more flexible rubber protective layer. Another minor, yet still a drawback, is that at high speeds, the pulse unit will go into protection mode after pressing the button and will immediately restart and begin working. So, from pressing the button to starting work, it takes half a second. Advantages The thing can actually be assembled in half a day with minimal costs. The power source can be anything, including an iron transformer of 15 to 20 watts, supplemented with a rectifier and a smoothing capacitor. Using such a device is very pleasant. The handle is light and your hand doesn't get tired. There is no danger of a component, even the smallest one, slipping off. You can position them precisely on the board. With suction cups, it is suitable for dismantling even large components. The power is sufficient. You can make the suction cups yourself. For example, from heat-resistant sealant. In general, such a simple tweezer will save you a lot of nerves and speed up your work pace when soldering SMD. I recommend it. This video is coming to an end. As always, you can find all the useful links in the description. Well, as always, this was Kazianov K. See you next time. Goodbye.